Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, so it's really cold here. I'm wearing a big coat, but it's freezing. So I don't know how long I'll be here trying to do this. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is um, people ask me. I get a lot of comments about is that you know if there's a recession coming, what are you going to do? Are you ready for everything to go completely off the rails? What are you going to do? Are you safe? And I try to be. So I'll just talk about that briefly. What I'm doing. And now this is again not financial advice. I'm I, I'm just learning. I'm an amateur like you, unless you're a pro tell me what to do, but there we are. Um, I'm, I'm learning, but here we are. So in the portfolio, what I've tried to do is I've tried to pe pick people who, in case there's a recession, I think they might be able to do okay. So what have I got? First, I've got Olivia Danville, whose trade and big profits are both trading Forex. Now, Forex, it doesn't sort of matter if the markets, specifically, if equities are going up or down, they can trade either way in the Forex markets. This currency against that currency. They look at macroeconomic conditions, what's happening, and they can pretty much trade the markets both ways, you know? It's not like someone who's only a long buy only equities trader, just buying companies and holding on to them. Forex traders, uh, I think, are more used to the market and the fluctuations in the market. Sometimes they're buying, I don't know, euro against GBP, sometimes they're selling it, you know. Um, so these two guys here, now Olivia Danville only ever uses a small amount of his money for trades. So that sort of makes him quite safe. Big Profits uses more, but I've seen that he's very conservative. He doesn't allow big, big losses. He seems to cut them off really quickly. So for these two guys, what I'm hoping is that if something does go really wrong, either they can make money or they can, A, can they adapt fast enough? Can they adapt quickly? Now I look at Olivia Danville's um, kind of statistics, and if you look at this over the last, you know, not one month of, of red, it's, it's hard to do, you know? If I go to um, Big Profits and I look at his statistics, um, again, we're seeing really very few, very little red. You know, both of these guys seem to be very adept, sort of skilled at not losing money or cutting off losses. So for those two guys, my two Forex traders, I'm quite sort of confident in them. We'll see what happens. I don't know, not financial advice, but I'm quite confident that those two can handle it. Now, equities traders, so the, the stock markets, buying companies, who have I got? Harshmith and Balance AM. Harshmith, constantly, he's a long, short, uh, portfolio manager. So he's in his portfolio, he's buying some companies, he's selling others. And he's doing that to kind of hedge himself, protect himself. So if these ones go down, these ones should go up, inversely correlated. He tries to uh, sort of balance it out and create security within his portfolio. Now he's very, very aware, Harshmith, always talking about what happens if it all goes wrong, is there going to be a recession? He's ready for it. I see that in his comments. So if something worse with was to come to worst, I'd be hopeful that Harshmith could react quickly. Balance AM likewise. I see his um, his comments and I see someone who's very aware of watching the markets, aware of how much money they're printing, aware of the interest rates and their effects on the markets. So I'm kind of confident in my two equities traders, they're not mine, but these two equities traders, that they could react quickly. Obviously I don't know, but there we are. Index trader who's actually lost money this week, but he's into cryptos. Now cryptos, supposedly, if everything goes kablooey, cryptos might go up. They're sort of seen as a bit of a safe haven or an alternative to the, the regular financial system. Are they? I don't know. They're so new and such an unknown quantity that I don't really know what will happen. But I'm investing them, uh, investing in them myself for that reason. And I, I, I see from him that he is too. So it's a bit of a wild card index trader, but there we go. Grepod, don't know. I've got so little money invested in. He seems to have made some money. His, his uh, portfolio at the moment is fairly conservative. Treasuries and kind of low risk, low re yield stuff. So I think he is aware of risk. And even if it goes kablam, he can't lose me too much. So that, that's kind of what I'm doing in my portfolio on eToro. Apart from that, I'm buying cryptos. Okay, so I've bought cryptos. I've been buying them since they were at their sort of bottoms this year. I've been buying Bitcoin, Ethereum. I've got some ADA. I've got some various things, but a lot of the major ones, you know, Ethereum and Bitcoin mostly. And something that I wanted to do last year, because then there's something called counterparty risk. So what if I put them on the exchange and the exchange fails? or they run out of money, or they go bankrupt, then I lose all my cryptos. And I knew this uh, quite a while ago, and, but I didn't have enough money to do anything about it. So this year I've managed to get my like hardware wallet, my Ledger Nano, which I talked about, X, and I've actually put my cryptos onto a hardware wallet. So I bought them on exchange, I've moved them off exchange. It's as safe as I think I can be. From everything I've read and everything I've heard, that's the safe conservative play. So over here on eToro, I've got these guys who all seem to be aware of potential bear market, 
Off eToro, I've also got um, my cryptos, and my cryptos aren't stored on exchanges, making me sort of a bit unsafe with counterparty risk. What if the people who are storing them for me collapse? I've actually stored them on my hardware wallet, so I have my own private keys. I made a bit of a video about that, but not the best. So I've got that. Now, hope, as I said, cryptos, maybe if everything fails, people will put money into cryptos. Cryptos might go up, so that might, if I do lose a lot of money on this, the cryptos might balance it out. It's a hedge. Apart from that, you might have seen videos which I'll put here where another sort of thing which was really exciting to me was not just buying gold and silver like on here, on eToro and sort of, but actually buying physical gold and silver. So I worked out in these other videos that I made how I can do that because I've never done that before, buying gold and silver because they're another meant to be from what I hear, okay? Not investment advice this, I'm just learning. But from what I hear, if everything goes kablooey, so A, you've got cryptos, might go up, but historically, one of the biggest stores of value in safe haven assets was gold, gold and silver, precious metals. So I found out where can I buy them? Because if you buy paper, paper, I mean like you buy CFDs of gold and silver or gold futures or silver futures or, uh, you know, you're still exposed to having them on an exchange. And what if the exchange collapses? What if everyone suddenly asks for their gold at once and they just say, we don't actually have any gold, we don't have enough gold to give out, and so you're left with nothing. So pe what people, some people say, is that the safest, safest way is to have the physical metal. Now that seems really complicated, but I went in search of that and found out how to get it. So I've, I've got some silver, you can see it in those videos. I've got like two grams of gold, but I've also just ordered uh, some of these, which is the 2020 one ounce Canadian silver, silver maple leaf coin, which is just a silver coin, around 18 euros each. I've got some of them coming. I think it's a beautiful coin. Really, really, uh, it's easy to get obsessed, by the way, with all of these things. Every asset class, when I start looking into it, I get a bit obsessed. But these are beautiful. So I've ordered some of them, some more silver. So I've already got some silver, some more. But because luckily I'm getting ad revenue from AdSense from all you wonderful people watching my videos, I've been able to afford, uh, I'm going to get a couple of these, which are one-tenth of an ounce um, Canadian gold, gold, gold maple leaf coins. Amazing. And... The biggest thing, which is really quite a lot of big investment for me, look at all these coins, I, I, they're so beautiful, I, I don't know, it's easy to get a bit obsessed with these, is this, I'm getting a one ounce gold, one ounce, which is a lot, I couldn't afford anything last year, so thank you all for watching the adverts and stuff, because I'm going to get a one ounce gold South African Krugerrand. This coin here is probably the best known gold bullion coin internationally ever. Okay, this one's known around the world. And the reason I want one which is well known is that if I come to sell it, it'll be the easiest one for gold dealers to sort of recognize and go, yeah, all right, that's legit. I know that one. They'll be able to sell it to someone else because it's got lots of name recognition. So I'm going to invest in one of these. And obviously then I have to start keeping stuff in a vault. I have to go and find a safety deposit box and keep them there and find out which banks are safe enough that if the worst does come to us, they won't just take the gold. So I have to work that stuff out. But I've got this. I've ordered it yesterday. And that's going to be on its way. And I'll show you when it does come. Loads of cool documentaries uh, um, about this gold and the Krugerrand and the South African Mint on YouTube. Really watch them. Beautifully filmed as well. But there we are. So, so that's kind of what I'm doing. Um, I won't go over these. I mean, I, I could go over how they've actually been doing. Harshmith, just quickly. Harshmith is at, it's roughly the same, minus 0 0.68 for the month, Harshmith. Uh, Olivia Danville is actually up. He's up about 1%. Um, Boom, for January. He's doing very well there. Um, Index Trader is, is down. Some of those gains that he was making, he's kind of given back. Zero, minus 0.15% 0 for the month, it says on Index Trader. Grepod, with his sort of conservative style at the moment, seems to be up a bit. 0 0.66 for the month for Grepod. Uh, big profits, roughly the same, I think. Really conservatively trading. They've, they've struggled, my guys, this month, but they haven't like lost me lots of money. Their preservation of capital is working. You know, they're not just losing 20% and whatever. So here we are, 0.05% up, practically the same in January. And Balance AM is at um, minus 1.16%. So there we are. There's my portfolio. The other thing, so basically, uh, these guys are all safe. Uh, I think these are very conservative traders. Off eToro, I've got my cryptos, and I'm storing them on a cold storage wallet. I'm not storing them with someone who has counterparty risk, another exchange. I'm storing them in my cold storage wallet, as safe as I think I can be, and I'm going to have physical precious metals. 
Those are the ways, because people have asked, that I'm trying to prepare for the worst case scenario and hedge myself and kind of give myself some insurance in case everything does go. The next thing where I'm going to a bit ruin my risk scores, at the moment my risk scores are really, really low. Um, I've lost 0.04% for January, I'm down a bit, I was up. My risk scores are average to max risk to uh, max yearly drawdown of 5.97. I've only got 14 copiers. This is really directed at these 14 copiers. Do you remember I was talking about maybe buying some Bitcoin and some Ethereum and some gold, I think I'd go with gold ETFs by the way, and silver ETFs on eToro? I th to better reflect what I really believe in, I'm going to do it, okay? So anyone who's copying me, I am, I'm going to wait, I'm going to put out this video. Once you've seen this video, like, fair warning, I just, I don't want to do something if you're copying me, which is like, what's he done? He suddenly changed style, I want to tell you, you know? So it's what I was talking about in my last couple of videos, I'm going to do it. So I think I'm going to take, uh, do 5% in Bitcoin, unleveraged. All of these will be unleveraged, no leverage, I don't want fees racking up. So, because I want to hold them for quite a long time. 5% in Bitcoin. 5 to 7% in Ethereum, because I see it, it, it its all-time high is a bigger multiple of where it is now. Um, so Bitcoin and Ethereum, and I think maybe 3 or 3% in a gold ETF, maybe 2 or 3% in a silver ETF. And there we are. So I think around 17% overall. I'm going to do that. I'm going to buy some like manual trades, and they're going to be mixed in with this. I'll have to take some of that money from these guys. I'll rebalance the portfolio. That's what I think I'm going to do. So there we are, to be warned. Okay, so if you're copying me and you're not into that, just stop copying me. I will understand completely. You know, I spent the last year just copy trading and just the lowest risk guys, and this may increase my risk score. And I don't know what's going to happen. I think long term, they're going to go up. But in the short term, they may go down, all right? And I don't want people losing money because they're copying me and they, you know, I, I suddenly did something out of the norm. That's where I am. Um, so there we are. I thought I'd go over that for everyone who's sort of constantly asking, what are you going to do? Because I know everyone's really worried. It looks like, oh, what's happening with the world? And you hear all this sort of doom and gloom and I don't know. I don't, am I right? I don't know. But I'm trying, I've learned and I've tried to read and listen to people and watch videos. And this is the best I can come up with at the moment. If you have any other ideas for how to stay safe, let me know. See you guys. Bye.